we're Team Four, and uh, we're presenting on making a nonprofit, uh, nonprofit organization for children with ASD or uh, on the autism spectrum. And um, yeah, so thank you for being here. I'm Colin Croft, and I'm going to be going into pre neuroscience and cognitive science. I'm Sophia Mishki, and I'm an undecided freshman here in Egypt. Patrick Sue, and I'm fortunate. So as you give us the problem, global mental health issues, the big thing we you know, narrowed it down to was the autism spectrum disorder. We found this community to have uh, you know, major impact once you have been placed on the spectrum, your life is a lot harder. And although there are some more prevalent issues uh, by statistical number, this community is affected far more than many others. So we have a kind of broad range of conditions and challenges we have to take, you know, when you have a kid with autism, they're not going to be able to be diagnosed, like, just based on the list of syndromes. Every kid is different. Autism has this wide variation, and you have to account for them for who they are as an individual. Um, so as we looked statistically at the Center of Disease Control, we found that one in 59 individuals in the United States are affected and are put on this uh, spectrum of disorders. And in the US, we have this increasing uh, diagnosis over time as we learn to redefine and diagnose people with this issue. The numbers just keep rising. So the background that we decided to go with, we chose our demographic, which is in the six to 11 year olds in the state of New Jersey who have moderate to high functioning autism, thus including Asperger's. Um, the reason that we decided to not go with severe autism is because normally they have to have a trained medical professional with them someone who supervises them throughout the day. The reason why we chose autism is because 95% of people on the spectrum have accompanying illnesses with them. Um, so that could be ADHD, uh, anxiety, depression, but normally those develop later on, probably through bullying and other sort of those habits. Um, but there's also great potential to improve the life of people with autism. If you're able to start early enough, there's a lot of impact that can be made if you start early. The reason why we chose New Jersey is because it has the highest population of autistic children um, in the United States. And we chose three counties out of that, which we chose Ocean, Essex, and Hudson. Um, the population overall between those counties is 2.2 uh, million, with about 7,000 of those being part of the autistic community. And we chose six to 11 year olds because again, if you start early enough, then you have the greatest impact. But we also found that bullying happens greatest for any age group, but specifically, through six-year-olds, through 11-year-olds is when they have the most bullying, especially if you're on the spectrum. Um, and also because it's, autism is diagnosed between the ages of four and 10, this would be a good time to start getting them involved in activities that will be benefiting them. So the case study that we had that was given to us by this organization um, went through CD, who's diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, he had an obsession with seashells that is different from normal to big people his age. Um, he had a hard time communicating with people in his community, including his family members, and his parents actually, specifically they said that the mother had a fear that he would be bullied, which is something that we saw from the slide before. So our objective in all of this is to destigmatize the atmosphere around children with autism, make it more comfortable for them, and make it so that others don't have this uncomfortableness talking about it. Let's make it something that's known, something that's okay. Um, especially with children in this age range, academics are a big problem. They have a hard time being, going through the educational system um, and they usually challenge, have more challenges with school. Um, something that we found interesting was there was a statistic that came out that 56% of autistic adults had never had friends or acquaintances in their life. So really developing these deep social bonds starting early would probably benefit these kids and up into adulthood a lot more. So our solution is we would create a mentorship organization where we would pair um, teenagers without autism with the six to 11 year olds with ASD. And so one of, in our research, we found that a lot of these kids with ASD had a hard time determining who was a friend and who was not. So we would call the mentors friends or buddies. Just to further clarify, this is someone they can be comfortable with and just to term that. And then the mentors 
would have specific training for ASD, so they'd be trained by PhD students, as well as successful adults with ASD. And then we would also incorporate a little bit of research, so we would survey the parents before the study, before they began the mentoring program, to rate their kids on level of happiness, how they were doing in school, the number of friends, and how they interacted with others. And then we would collaborate with Princeton University to kind of see if our program is effective and how it's working. So the cost for a child with autism is usually about $60,000 per year. Um, that's fairly expensive compared to uh, a child without autism. So something that we're happy about is that we're able to present this as a nonprofit, which means that we're going to be able to provide free services, meaning there won't be extra costs that would be required for the families. Um, and actually, if you look at the map here, this region right here is Ocean, which has the highest population of autistic children in the area, but it's also probably among the poorest in New Jersey. So being able to provide these uh, services for free would be very beneficial to them. There's also the possibility that if we're able to get these kids connected and involved, they might not develop these issues later on, like depression and anxiety, which would cause, or which would create further need for having um, more counseling and more therapy. So we could possibly in the future decrease the cost for these children. So our medical interventions, medicine is all about improving the quality of life for people. So our improvement on quality of life is more focused on social skills. So how can we help them with their social interactions? Having them with an older friend can help them learn social skills and nonverbal cues, like slouching in a chair if they suddenly lose interest, or like crossing their arms. We also wanna teach them how to create and learn skills for friendship. So how to interact with someone who is there to support them. And then we also wanna help them find their strengths. We plan to pair them, and we'll go into this more later, but we plan to pair them with mentors that have similar interests to them in hopes that they can help find what they're passionate about. So the public health interventions, we did a lot of research on this and we found that it would actually benefit all parties involved. Mentors rated that they had increased happiness and life expectancy, so there have been a lot of studies on that that have found mentors are happier in general and they live longer. Um, the mentees, there are studies that have found mentees will have increased self-worth in grade levels, as well as just overall confidence. And then it'll also help the parents because it'll give them this feeling of support. Like they're not the only ones looking out for their children. Like there's this community behind them that cares about their kid. And it'll also give them a community of people to connect to. They can share ideas or things that may have helped their children. I mean, there's no one true case of autism that it's all across the spectrum, but feeling of like a community and shared support for them. Okay, so since we're more focused on the social aspect of ASD, our technological solution is more focused on increasing the efficacy of our specific organization. So we were planning on doing hybrid online and in-person training for our mentors so that they can effectively learn to interact with kids with ASD. Um, and then speaking more on the skills portion, we plan to have an online questionnaire to pair mentors and mentees that have similar interests because we're hoping to not only increase the social skills of kids with autism, but to allow them to develop their skills and their interests that can propel them towards success in the future. Um, and then lastly, for our technological outreach, social media is a very cost-effective way to reach a broad audience. So we were going to utilize that technology to reach out to uh, different platforms and people and spread the word. And then since we're working with minors, there are a lot of legal implications to consider. So we are planning on having a legal counsel employed by our organization uh, and they would help us handle things such as parent permission and FERPA because uh, of course the, the um, privacy of the kids is important to us and the sensitivity of the information, that's our number one priority one of our number one priorities, so we're focusing on that, and also making sure that we're giving uh, comprehensive background checks to our employees to make sure that they are safe to work with the kids. Okay. Taking all these into consideration, we have our timeline, a breakdown of how we're gonna basically implement the plan. The first year is all gonna be about organization infrastructure. 
this is where we're gonna get our satellite facilities, this is where we get our trainers, this is where we're gonna do everything that we can to like reach out to people, we're gonna find interest points, we're gonna find schools, we're gonna find hospitals that we can actually help advertise our sort of organization. And a large part of this is gonna be the research that needs to be done. Um, we're gonna actually be contacting Princeton University to help us with uh, research into figuring out a correct training program to help these um, individuals afflicted with AMC. Because for a mentoring program, ASD is actually really sort of specific. Unlike Big Brothers and Big Sisters, we have to be a lot more specialized because it's a lot more like careful waters that we need to tread. Um, second year, after we like find some of our initial studies, we're gonna start to really be implementing it. Uh, we're gonna start pairing our mentor, our buddies with the mentees. We're gonna start increasing the amount of surveys we get out. We're gonna get feedback from the parents, from the community and see how it works out. So second year is all gonna be about reflection. We're gonna refine our plan. In third year, after we find out, we're gonna keep, we're gonna repeat the surveys, we're gonna get more information, more data. From now, we're gonna have studies from the researchers that we can actually use to see what can we do in the future? Do we need to do this? Do we do this right? And from there, we can expand or we can just continue with more refinements. This is a budgetary breakdown that sort of tie, ties into the timeline. A lot of the money initially we spent on research, we have $3.5 million that we're gonna spend that's similar to the NIH grant that can be given to autism professors or researchers in order to give us a good idea of what we're trying to look for. Um, a lot of it will be spent on the basic starting costs of like finding organizations, renting spaces, hiring people. Afterwards, we can just spend it on program analysis and expansion. If you can see here, year by year, it's going to increase at that first jump, and the variable costs just increase as long as we get more and more children, we hire more and more people. Right? And continuing after that, there are some sort of challenges that we need to think of. The ch biggest challenge right now is just sort of the outreach and incentives to join, right? The outreach, it's a new organization dedicated for children, but it's the children part that we have to be careful of because these communities, parents, right, they're dealing with like stigmatized communities against them. And so I have to be very careful about how we get these people and we want to help them. That's what we're really pushing for. We have a limited time frame too. This is like a study that can, it's not it's usually supposed to be done within three years. So we have to like really be careful about how we do it. That's what the first year is dedicated to research or organization. And uh, across like the uh, past couple of decades, the definition of autism has really changed from, it used to be only like very few percentages, it used to be categorized as some sort of anxiety disorder. And now we have a very wide spectrum. We have the ASD, we have Asperger's, we have low functioning, we have high mid functioning. And if we want to expand in the future, we have to take into account that the definition of autism in the States isn't the same as the definition of autism in maybe China or Europe. And that's something we have to take into consideration. And as like potentially as our, uh, as the people we fund go out to expand to other states, they'll have their knowledge with us and we can use them as a sort of like gateway to like expand to other countries and use them as their own sort of knowledge now. So, yeah, as we, we were starting to say, as we go into the future extent, uh, steps, we're starting there um, and we want to expand out. Each year we're gonna get more and more info with working with Princeton. We wanna be able to show that, you know, we're working specifically as an organization and start spreading throughout our state that we're starting in and then throughout the country and in you know, the US. So we wanna pair with other external organizations as we go on, mostly just working with the state and their medical facilities to promote uh, us as a viable solution to help kids, along with other universities. I mean, you know, we're pairing with Princeton and they might not be you know, the best university, uh, you know, U of A, <laughs> but they have a name. You know, when Princeton releases a study on our kids and showing that we're working, that's gonna allow us to expand outwards. That has a lot of credibility. And with global expansion, as we said, it's a broad term, it's kind of hard. But there's one thing, you know, or two things that we all share as people. We all have this urge to grow and become better. And we all have emotions that, you know, we base on a generally similar basis. And what we wanna be doing with these kids is to be able to give them self-identity in a way to grow that mentorship can provide. We're working with six to 11 year olds and they need a basis to become social, to be given the opportunity in the education system to become more developed people, because it's hard, especially having these disabilities to get through that, to then find value and to then get a job and, you know, uh, I guess grow. So as we looked at that case study, he had an extreme interest in seashells. Through the program, he could have been placed with another high schooler who liked biology, seashells, and then through that, works together, get him through school system, maybe he gets into marine biology. Then using the organization, we can give him references, get him into college, he can study that and hopefully find a job because he has people saying, he might have this disorder, but we know him as a person, and he has individual talents that he can show, and this is how you'll help 
in the workforce. So as I was saying, that, that's the importance, you know, when, as Terry says, when you have a kid with autism, you have a kid with autism, they're different. But we can work with them on an individual level at a young age to build up a foundation so that they can perform throughout life and live something happy. off of the like my sort of big brothers big sisters their own training program and the mentors we're going to be recruiting are going to both be high school students right who want like who can volunteer who can be like looking on the resume that's their incentive right we can also recruit individuals who have succeeded with asd right as a great motivation so that you can really relate to them right and the people we're going to be training these mentors these buddies these friends are going to be like phd uh, graduate graduate students who have like dedicated studies in autism or psychology themselves professors that we can pay not full-time, but at least part-time develop some sort of training program and help out train this sort of solution. And it also wouldn't be a ton of hours a week. It might be an hour or two a week playing board games or going for a walk on the beach looking for shells. Like, it's not a huge time commitment. It's when it works, just on a consistent basis. And it's really trying to make them feel like they have their own friend and they won't be judged based upon just outside differences. That's funny. I was thinking about the same thing brother and sister I've been associated with that and it is so applicable to this case where you know uh, the kids with autism aren't very different from us I mean the way we see things it's not necessarily the right way maybe there are different ways to see it right and uh, I feel this is you are addressing a very good problem and your solution is very good in terms of bringing a network where you uh, you know add mentors and you brought in a very important point of adding people successful people who have you know Succeeded despite having uh, you know the spectrum challenges because if you if you had removed like Bill Gates if he was supposed to think regularly like all other people do maybe he would have he would have been so successful just I mean he was uh, I mean you have to bring that up uh, out in school uh, the kids that you know because they are special they can do special things and they shouldn't look at it like uh, something of a, you know like a disadvantage but they should look at it as an opportunity and then bring that out right so that's that's a great point. I feel that, uh, do you think there are opportunities to have uh, awareness programs for outsiders, like people to know about uh, you know, autism yes. and spectrum disorders? Yes, um, so part of, the, part of our program, right, is that after we get these people to experience like social life, they experience their individuality, and what that happens is that the mentors and the family, part of like our program that we talk about, which sort of like communities we're gonna affect, right? The family and the mentors of the, uh, the buddies of the individuals, are going to like experience this sort of like growth and where they recognize that this person is just like any other end, right? They can know that all the stigma around them is sort of like lies, right? And that's just gonna like slowly like build up and snowball out as long as we get like more and more expansion. Because that's the whole point, right? The stigmatization, so we think that so that we can get these communities to really enjoy these people because they're not just that different, like you said. Yeah. So you're not gonna have any, sorry, uh, any explicit uh, training programs or awareness programs, right? So you feel that this program itself will have a Yes, I believe in this program that it can. There is mentioned. room in our budget too for special events. We specifically left some so that we could do special nights for stuff like that. Yeah, having stuff like you know awareness nights, bringing other people, having stuff like writing a resume, see what it looks like and how we can promote, you know, stuff like that, or having maybe you know a prom kind of dance where you can bring the community together. I mean, that's one of the things is this doesn't cost that much of a budget. That's why we have money for research and that's why we have extra money to be branching out these next few years into the future and going into the schools and having so much awareness and trying to bring people in. So I guess I have a little bit of concern about the idea of funding uh, idea. So, I mean, this is a relatively small program. Uh, being a funding agency is a major task in its own right. And the timeline for turnaround of information back and feedback is could be somewhat uh, extended. So I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, what, what would you say that really justifies your uh, approach to going in that direction? Okay. 
in the third year, right? Um, in the first year, we funded re uh, research for Princeton, right? And in the third year, we probably have some good analysis, right? And using that study, we would determine whether or not our, our organization needs some more refinements and aspects that would, they would give us more if we could basically expand out. We're using the professional standards of a basically really high class institution to basically help determine where we are gonna head out into the future. And that's our sort of success state. Yeah, I, I like that idea of it being more of an evaluator kind of game of you know, paying somebody that's a professional in yeah. this area to look at what you're doing and, and helping you to evaluate whether it's you know, being successful rather than just a pure research kind of thing in this yeah. area. Because that's, you know, with major NIH funding and other uh, sources of the And we also understand that it might not be finished after three years. Like, we are funding them, but we understand that if they're not done within our time frame, that there is a possibility of finding a way to continue a little longer so that way they have more results. Because often studies do take a little longer than a year or two. Do you find, do you see your goal as more towards mainstreaming these people with on ASD, or is it saving the cost? Because I noticed that you guys mentioned about the six, 8,000 a year for these kids. And I'm just wondering where more of the focus is. Our goal is to help the individual, but that's okay. one of the great benefits is for us to be doing something like this, it's way less you know, cost overall than putting a kid through intensive you know, therapies later in life and medication. Of course, we're not an alternative to medication. You know, if your doctor prescribed you something, you should take it. But having similar effects, we, we had studies showing mentoring will help, you know, social and stuff like that. And instead of suppressing these symptoms that people have with ASD with medication, we're learning how to handle them and address them in the individual. Thank you for your time.